Hey guys, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I'm going to go over with you why I think Willie Mays cards are due for a major price correction. Now, uh, I know a lot of you have been following the, the major price increases that are happening in uh, the vintage uh, sports cards market. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that, you know, that even though the prices are going up, Willie Mays cards, for the most part, are not going up um, more than than really the market or the market leader. Now, let me establish some ground rules for the analysis I put together, and I'm going to show you guys. Um, first, the, the first assumption is this, is that outside of a few cards, such as the Hall of Fame rookie cards, um, and maybe some high-level short prints, and then the years where there was uh, another player like Jackie Robinson, he would be the only really other player that was comparable. In in the vintage card market uh, from 1955 to 65, uh, which is the analysis that I put together uh, focus, typically the, the leader in the market in terms of price is Mickey Mantle. And then it's followed by Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, and uh, like I said, Hall of Fame rookie cards and some other short prints might be in there somewhere. But those players are typically the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to price and value. Now, the analysis I put together, again, is from 1955 to 65. And you may ask me you know, why I chose that time period. Um, really, it's because I wanted to kind of um, look at player value in terms of performance um, along with you know, card value in terms of uh, pricing. Now, you know, there's some other factors at play, but I think as we've gotten more sophisticated in looking at players, I'm hoping that, and I think what's going to happen is we're going to get, get more sophisticated looking at what those players' cards should be valued and in terms of just relative overall value based on how good of a player they were. Um, so if you look at... Um, you know, Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle. Now, from 1955 to 1965, um, you know, and I chose these years for a lot of, a lot of reasons. One is um, this is, a, you know, a time period where both players were pretty much either at their peak or they had, you know, peak years. But also, it also shows that, you know, if I would have went longer to the right, uh, you know, Mays was still performing well past 65. You know, Mantle's gone over a cliff even even worse than um, the numbers here show. So this really kind of cuts off the tail of, of the really bad years for Mantle and really shows that, you know, Mickey or Willie Mays was, you know, the greatest player of the 60s. And I think um, you can make an argument that Mantle may have been that player in the 50s. But I'll show you based on his yes, total overall value, you know, Willie Mays was a much more valuable player. And you might bring up injuries, you might bring up other issues, but here's what I'm going to say is that it doesn't really matter. Ken Griffey Jr. got hurt. Ted Williams lost years to service, okay? Um, in the end, that doesn't correct the value that those players uh, performed with on the field. And, you know, we can speculate all we want, but Mickey Mantle's performance is in the books. There's no other factors to, to kind of adjust right now. Um, and, you know, the performance speaks for itself. Now, you could just chart here, you know, Mickey Mantle, after 61, you know, pretty much um, was done. You know, fell off a cliff. I mean, I, and I don't want to say done, but I'm saying comparatively to Mays, they quit being in the same stratosphere. Six war, three war players are still really valuable. So Mickey Mantle uh, was a, still a valuable player even in 65. But he wasn't a superstar like Willie Mays was. You know, Willie Mays started to elevate his performance, you know, in 60, 61, uh, all the way through the 60s. So he never really fell off a cliff like, uh, you know, like um, Mano did. You know, obviously the last couple of years for Mays, like every player, you know, you start seeing that decline. But, you know, he was very consistent. Now, if you look at overall statistics, you know, from 1955 through 65, you see that, you know, Willie Mays, I threw Hank Aaron in just for another comparison. Because I think Hank Aaron cards are the next to kind of go up as well. Um, you have, you know, Total War. 
basically over that time period, you know, 25 points uh, you know, war higher for Willie Mays. On average, Willie Mays averaged 2.3 war a year higher than Mantle. Um, six out of those 11 years, he was the highest uh, in terms of just total war comparatively. Uh, finished higher in MVP voting on average in those years. And then you look at the MVP awards he won, um, three versus one, and you know there's other factors at play. I'm sure you can guess what some of those other factors could be, why Willie Mays may have not have won as many MVP awards. But I, I think you know there, there definitely was some other factors at play. So, um, And you can see Hank Aaron was a very comparable player and he actually is almost a straight line in terms of war. He, he just performed the same almost every year. And uh, he was very consistent as well. And overall, uh, his career war is higher than Mantle's because he you know, played a lot longer and, and, and had a lot better years towards the end of his career than, than Mantle did. But, you know, Mays in short bursts in terms of when they were all at the peak was better for that, you know, 10, 11 year period. Um, and... You know, for a player, he, you know, generated, you know, almost 45 points higher of war for his career than, than Mano. So, you know, Mays was a much more valuable player um, throughout the 50, or throughout that 60s period um, and, you know, for his career. So, you know, in general, we can say with pretty good confidence that Willie Mays was a better player than Mickey Mantle. Now, you take out the um, triple crown performance, which is a big factor in, in Mantle. The, the fact that he was kind of the superstar, good-looking guy from New York, all that is in play. I get that. But in general, you know, Willie Mays um, was a better player, and he's probably the best player in the 60s. Um, and for a long period of his career, he was comparable in, with Mantle in terms of years they played and was a better player. So, you know, his values should be somewhat comparable. Now, when we show you... When you see the actual values, um, they're not comparable, and I think it's it's very interesting to me. So you take the 55 Bowman because they're you know they're not in the same sets in 55. You know, the top sets doesn't have a mantle. You can see in 2007 to 21. So I use average VCP prices for PSA eights. So this is the average prices um, in 19. Sorry, in 2007 to 2021, so current, just recent BCP, I looked at the average price. And you can see what if it is a multiplier or a factor, you know, how much the card's gone up. So from the 1955 Bowman has, you know, quadrupled in value from 2007 to now, while the Bowman Maze has pretty much gone up 3.7. So you look through there and you can kind of see that in relative comparison, the amount of value the cards have gone up. Um, certain years, like the 1960 Mantle, has gone up a lot more than the Maze, and then the 58 Maze has gone up a lot more than the 58 Mantle in terms of just a, a multiplier. Um, so, you know, what that gets to is, in general, Maze and Mantle cards have gone up in relative um, the same amount, the same factor year over year. Um, together. So um, when I look at maze cards, you know, my first assumption when I put this analysis together was that that maze cards was accelerating in value faster than Mantle because not only was people kind of, I thought people were recognizing that maze was a great player and, and should be more comparable to Mantle in terms of value, but his cards were grossly undervalued, you know, and so would have been accelerating. But when you look at it, you know, in general, they're going up and down, you know, at the same rate. And then if you look at 2007 versus 21, you can see the curve between the uh, the two players in terms of value looks almost identical. Now, there's the 56 spike for Mantle in 2021, where the 56 has kind of become Mantle's second most desired card outside of the um, rookie. Um, I think it's the triple crown factor. But be that as it may, you know, whereas the, the 58 maze has kind of spiked a little bit, um, you know, you don't see that dramatic crease. But, you know, you look at these curves and, you know, if I were to do, you know, some linear regression analysis or something, you could probably say they're 
pretty much the same curve that, that they've gone up in relative amounts. And, and in fact, if you look at on average price, so the average price for a, uh, a mantle card from, you know, from 2007, from 1955 to 65 was $1,600. And a maze is $480. And the difference between a mantle and a maze card on average from that time period was around $1,100. And a factor of 3.4. So you know, the, the mano card was 3.4 times more worth more than the maze. Today, um, that average mano card is $7,300 versus $2,200 for the maze. A difference of $5,000 and a factor of 3.3. So the factor has actually gone down slightly. And now this is a really interesting take here because in my opinion because um the factors between the cards haven't really changed but the total dollars have gotten nuts so you know back in the day you know eleven hundred dollars okay um in 2007 that was still a reasonable difference i i would say today five thousand dollars difference on average between a mantle and a maze card on average from 1955 through 65 is just nuts and I think, you know, it, it, it really shows that there is a lot of potential for maze cards to go up in value. And I, I really think they will because there's some other factors at play. And, you know, we kind of kind of beat around the bush a little bit in the, when, when I was discussing MVP awards. But when you look at, um, you know, some articles that's been written out there about, um, you know, racism and sports cards, right? And values. There's actually been scientific studies and there's been academic papers written about race performance and card values. So this has been studied by other folks and in some cases they found some some correlation, in some cases they haven't. But I would say that there is something there in terms of just that, you know, the prices were different in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. You know, it's always been there. Um, and it's kind of naive for us to say that there wasn't other factors at play other than just Mano played in New York, you know, Maze, you know, played somewhat in New York and then, you know, California. And that was the only factor. And, and Mano had one triple crown year and Maze didn't. And, you know, th those are very, I don't, I won't call them minor, but they're not the full story. And, and so I think there was other factors at play now. There's, there's other factors at play, which I hate to bring up um, more than I hate to bring up, you know, racism. But, you know, you know, we've seen spikes happen when players pass away. And, you know, I think as we get through, you know, unfortunately, the, the majority of the 50s you know, stars are, are leaving us. I think, you know, we saw a little spike with the usual with, with Aaron. Um, we could see another thing happen, you know, with Mays. And. And maybe that will spur an impetus. Maybe there will be a, you know, a true documentary about Willie Mays. I read his autobiography and it was great. And I think there could be a great movie about Willie Mays. Um, you know, so I think there could be other things that could you know, drive people to realize that, that there shouldn't be this huge factor of difference in value between Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle. They occupy virtually the same space and time. They've, they occupy the same sets of cards. There is no difference in population report for the most part that uh, between these these players. So it's not like you can say, well, the mano cards are more rare. They're more in demand. I agree with that. And so the prices are, are there. But, you know, Willie Mays has got a pretty strong following, too. And his cards are in demand. Um, and I, I just think that eventually, like we're seeing with Jackie Robinson and, and, some, and those prices really taking off. I, I just predict that Willie Mays will become, you know, the next guy to really take off and even more than he has. And you're starting to see it. I think this is the beginning of it. But when you've got a $5,000 difference between Mays and Mantle, even if it, if it's splitting the difference, you know, that would mean that, you know, an average Willie Mays card from 55 to 65 would go up to on average $4,000, right? Well, that's $2,000 a card. That's, that's doubling basically what they're worth today. And if you, if I was going to make a bet and tell me, okay, make one big prediction in the next five years, and I'd say 
that if the price card, sorry, if the sports card market keeps going up and the value is still there and people are still collecting at this rate, in five years, uh, vintage PSA 8 maze cards will double in value. I think that is um, a pretty um, mid-ground position based on you know some of the research I've done and just based on some other factors. So you guys can comment and, and tell me what you think. But you know, I just think that there is so much room there, and and the premise is that Maze was just a better player, and his prices don't reflect even closeness to, to Mano in terms of value. And so I, I welcome any comments and, 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 and any comments that you guys have um, on this. And um, I appreciate any feedback and hopefully I can put together some other analysis and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time and see what you guys think. Bye.